picture film series that Walt did. So they were IP, if you will. We all grew up with these films in our elementary and junior high schools. That is a cruising beaver there, or <laughs> one with a leak, or one that ate the wrong kind of food last night. <laughs> Um, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Bruce is the um, I think if you look quickly, you'll see a raccoon with a really hyper tail down Right over there. there. Yeah. Yeah. And the little marmots were up over this tunnel, which is still there with all the boards over it. When you walk by Big Thunder, you see that tunnel that has boards boarded up. When you come out on the other side along the river, we go under Big Thunder Waterfall, the largest waterfall in Disneyland, and the namesake for Big Thunder Mountain. Um, now, I'm going to say something terribly un-PC about the next two waterfalls, but believe me, it's in the script from the ride. <clears throat> These other two falls we call the Twin Sisters. I guess that's because they're always babbling. <laughs> Dad, I didn't write it. You know, uh, that, that's probably uh, Marty Scalar, maybe. <laughs> Uh, anyway, continuing on with our journey, we come out through this tunnel, which you may recognize uh, at the back of the Bear River there, which is still in place. Notice the mules up above going over this. Uh, check out now the bear animation. There's some really good stuff in here. But they were all, you know, covered with real fur, and they're in real water that's dirty. And uh, <laughs> you can imagine the upkeep that Disney did. Now that trestle, a little bit of that was remaining up until a couple of years ago, and then it finally, I guess the termites got to it, and it, it caved in. But the tunnel is still there. So keep, you know, if we, if we can come up with an idea. I, I thought about, could we get Big Thunder to go over there? But there just wasn't enough energy in the track to make a loop around there. See, these little furry guys were beautifully taxidermied. No, they weren't taxidermied. They were covered with artificial fur, bear fur. Um, but they, they're quite, quite good animation. This predated audiometronics. They didn't have that word yet, and they hadn't really been synced to a recording. They were triggered just by... Just animation. Just animation, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. So look at that guy animation. in the water there. He's already broken, I think. <laughs> now, it's you still a, see fish leaping over there now. Yeah, there's there are a few. Okay. Look at the guy uh, kind of cruising around out it looks there. looks like a real bear. It does. And I, what kind of a track would that be? He's just going left and right and forward and backwards. That, that's pretty amazing stuff. Love to see that drained. So I think we come now to a very a, a debated point, and I think we're going to solve it for you today in the next scene, oh, which yeah. is the fighting stag, elk stags. Uh, some people believe it was on the right side of the track, which you see it here, so that's absolutely true. But some people also believe it was on the left side of the track, and the ruins of where those two guys were fighting is still there on the other side of the train. Now, why on earth did they move it over there? It wasn't just to put an owl, which was here in the later years. It really turns out that there was a problem with some of the live ride vehicles in this area. So look back behind the trees, you'll see some movement. Yep, and there is the problem. These guys don't like to work with people on their back when there are giant animals that are bigger than they are fighting. <laughs> so I fully believe that's why they moved to the other side. Through that arch bridge lies the living desert, which was probably the most famous of all Great nature sweet films. Shot here. Yeah. You an idea of the yellow it. streaks are supai and the red are coconino. You know, I worked the ride for one summer. Okay, the cactus still exists, some of them, at least down in Florida on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at the flash flood scene. And they took on strange shapes during the heat of the day, so they were very animated looking. The devil's paint pots are followed by geyser country. Again, all of these were very familiar to kids of this era uh, because we got them month in and month out at school in our, our nature classes. They would speed the train up here as you went around this, but that geyser was always designed so it sprayed everyone kind of nicely as you went around this curve. Now that was the key frame, the yeah, we see that a lot. icon from nature's, or from Living Desert. Um, don't have very much here of these rocks, and it's probably because they really didn't look that convincing. <laughs> But they were fun. To an eight-year-old, they were really fun. And then the last thing you saw was this old cat 
who played out in the narration at the end and said, if a bobcat is, cat has jumped on board, tell him to jump out and catch another ride. But between that was the most beautiful part of this ride, which in those days they couldn't capture on Technicolor film. And that was the, the gorgeous rainbow caverns created by Claude Coates. And to this day, I think it was one of the most amazing things, and we've got to find a way to do something like that somewhere. Here is another gone thing, and gone costuming. Um, yeah, that's security right there. Yeah, yeah. And a guy from the Matterhorn, I guess. No. 